All right, so I wanted to take this opportunity here today to talk about why front end is such a pain in the ass. And um, maybe you're not familiar with it, with what I mean by front end. I mean, actually, you probably are. You clicked on this video. But what I mean basically is loading data and putting it on your website, okay? And so if you've only used something like Webflow, well, that doesn't really count. You're not really loading data in most cases. And um, if you're using something like, I don't know, Bubble, that's also way different because they kind of set it up for you and that's also, it's a no-code platform. It's, it's pretty limiting. When you actually do it yourself, you run into a number of issues. So what I think a lot of people like about backend, especially what I like about backend, is damn near perfect type safety. And by type safety, what I mean is I can hover over this object here and it'll tell me exactly what it looks like. It says we'll have a contact ID, which is a string, We'll have coordinates, which is a t of type unknown, first name, string, or null. And you can basically hover over it and see exactly what this object looks like. Um, and this is the benefit of using TypeScript. If I use JavaScript, which I don't know, I don't think I could because I have these type annotations in here. This is not valid JavaScript. This actually gets compiled completely gone when, you, um, when, when it runs because it has to be turned into regular JavaScript to run in a browser which could be changing, um, but you want type safety, all right? Most people want type safety. TypeScript is widely used, but you do end up with several problems that are different on the front end than they are on the back end. Because in the back end, let me just show you, this is an example of an API call that I'm making from my back end. So what we have is um, this long type, which denotes kind of what the API is gonna return us. And then what we're getting back is an object with a contact, which is of this type, of this big thing up here. And so all we do is we annotate that this, and this is actually not even annotated, dude. That's crazy. Wait. Oh, that should just be data. So basically we're saying this returns an object called um, of type data. And so now if we hover over data, then we'll be able to see that it is of type data, which is of type contact, which contact is this, okay? And, and that's all easy because our code, we just access this and it's fucking easy. And the thing with backend is if my task takes 700 milliseconds or 1400 milliseconds, I don't give a shit, dude. One second is not gonna change my life. It might change my wallet by a tiny amount, but it's at the end of the day, it's not a big deal. Whereas on the front end, every millisecond counts because your user is sitting there watching the screen and if they get bored, they're going to fucking bounce. So you have to make it fast. And this is where stuff gets a little bit tricky, okay? So I'm just going to pull up my data file here, which, by the way, if anyone uses Next.js, I'm curious how you organize this because I have a use server file where we're using a private kind of database key. Um, so that's not exposed to the client. And then we're using use effect to use the server action to fetch that and promise all because we have three functions in here. But regardless, um, we have three separate requests here. And normally what I would do in the back end is if I wanted to get all this data kind of aggregated perfectly, either I would come up with some long ass kind of database query or I would just query each of these things separately. So we're querying from the contact table, the opportunity table, and then also pipelines and stages. So we're querying from four different tables and on the back end, I would just query each separately and then combine them and it would be fine, right? Because I would know, look, this is just, it's fine. I'm not, I don't know, I don't care how much memory or, you know, compute I'm using because I'm not doing fucking inference. It's just basic like computation, it's fine. But with this, it needs to be fast. And so I have to take a little bit more I guess, care in thinking about how I'm fetching this data and how I'm combining it. So in this case, we're combining opportunities and contacts because each contact can have multiple opportunities. So what this query gives us is um, each opportunity with the contact data. And then on top of that, we just have to combine it into one array, which is actually pretty fast. This looks complicated. It's got some, I guess, nested logic, but it, it, it is still pretty fast. Um, and it's running on the server, so that's largely okay. But with this stuff, what I could do is I could have both of these, and they're separate queries, so I could kind of do like promise all and do these. And then on the front end, 
I could combine all this data. And that's fine because for pipelines, we might have, I don't know, five pipelines. And then for stages, each pipeline maybe has six stages. So around 30, you know, rows or whatever, or objects in total. And that's fine because that would take a billionth of a millisecond to compute and combine into one kind of array. But with contacts, we have a thousand contacts in this case. Some people might have 10,000 or 100,000 contacts in some cases. And we're just not going to have that happening on the client. You know, apart from that, it would just, just be slow. I don't even know if I'm loading an array. If you're not aware, an array takes more space than just plain text um, in JavaScript. And so if you load like 100,000 objects into an array on someone's computer, I just, I'm not a big, I don't know. I don't know if that would like just slow their computer down to a crawl or make Chrome crash or some shit like that. But the, the point is, it's kind of a performance problem. So what we do instead is we're querying, like I said, opportunities and contacts in the same query. But the issue with this is we end up with a kind of compound object, okay? And, and it looks like this. So we have um, contact ID, phone number, email address, first name, last name, and we have coordinates, and then we have opportunities. And we have to combine this into a coherent object that TypeScript can tell us about when we're moving, when we're using that data. Um, because the other thing is, if we go get contact, so let's go to this operation here. And essentially what we're doing is, wait, basically all we're doing is we're querying contact data and we're getting an object called contact. And so now when I go to upsert this contact or to use operations on it, I can literally see that contact data, the address one exists on contact data. And that's fucking easy because it's literally just, it's just one object and I just do whatever I need with it. And it's cherry, right? Um, and if you haven't guessed in this video, I'm not going to talk about CSS. I actually really enjoy styling and tailwind. And so in this case, I'm just talking about this TypeScript shit and gymnastics, which some people will say type gymnastics. And I tend to agree that's a thing, but I also kind of don't mind it in some cases because it does, you know, encourage more disciplined code, which if you're not a big coder, um, the more discipline you show in writing your code, the easier it's going to be to maintain. And ultimately you're going to be able to go faster than if you ended up like your first two days or something coding, you might be faster with just JavaScript and just fucking plain SQL and just fucking let it ride, dude. But after a while, when you got a shit ton of interdependent like functions, you're going to want to kill yourself because you'll have no idea. Everything you'll do is going to break something and you, you just won't know. So um, anyways, if we come back to our database, what we have here is what the fuck, dude? We have our schema that we're importing from our drizzle ORM. And then we're inferring types from those to export types. And on top of that, with contacts, we have a JSON B column, which I store the coordinates. And so what I have to do here is I have to assert the type for that because we have to be able to show that to the front end, like, hey, this is what the type looks like. And so when we come back to our data, what we can see is that we're importing these types that we defined. And then since we're only querying, like since I'm selecting certain columns that I want to pull out of the database just to kind of save space and compute, we have to say, we have to use this fucked up TypeScript syntax I've never seen in my entire life, pick of this type, pick these properties, and then combine it with this coordinates type that's on, on that. And then we're also defining our opportunity, the types that we're pulling out of our opportunity. And then we're defining our type for this composite um, of contacts and opportunities, which is what I'm calling opportunity map, or sorry, contact map, contact opportunity map, which is a mix of contact map plus an array of opportunities. And um, yeah, dude, I mean, I don't know. You get, you, you do a shit ton of TypeScript gymnastics on the front end. Um, it's not just back end. And ultimately it's very useful because the front end, you know, it's, I don't know. I just feel like TypeScript is kind of harder on the front end. Um, plus data loading and like all this like shit to get data just displaying and, you know, hiding your API keys and stuff. And the given, the added constraint of 
needing to make it fast. So, um, by the way, I'm not saying this is the fastest, you know, page in the world. This is probably a very slow page. I'm not an expert, and I don't even think my columns in my database are indexed um, in the way that they could be. But I'm just saying that's one of the constraints that you have to deal with. And so, anyways, that's my kind of rant on um, why front end can be difficult. I highly recommend using TypeScript and TSX for your front end, but um, just know it can be a pain in the ass to uh, to get it working. And I have zero TS ignores. I'm very proud of that because what you can do here is I don't know. Maybe this maybe this will work because us effect is not a thing. But I can do at TS ignore. <laughs> See, and then it makes the error go away. And of course, this code isn't going to work. But that's why you uh, that's why you try not to use uh, TS ignore because you're going to end up with you might end up with shit that doesn't work, or you might end up with errors that you would have seen if you didn't have TS ignore there. So it's best to just try to do your best to fix all the TypeScript errors. And um, yeah, personally, I made this video because I'm pretty proud that uh, I actually got that shit working. Um, so yeah, anyways, that's the video. Thanks for watching. Make sure to smash that subscribe button, hit like, share with your friends, so send this video to your mom, and um, yeah, dude.